Your Majesty, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm very proud to be here in Oslo to share with you this special celebration of the Rainforest Foundation Norway. 25 years ago in Brazil, Sting and I met Chief Raoni, an elder of the indigenous Kayapo tribe, fighting to protect his people and his forest from the rampant land grabbing that was taking place in the Amazon. I remember his very words, having just seen Davi's very poignant message. He said this, there is a lot of smoke. My people are very sick. But whatever happens in the rainforest today, my home, will happen in yours tomorrow. Of course, he was so right, and his message inspired us to create the Rainforest Foundation. In the 1980s, to suggest that deforestation is a faraway land that could have a major impact on the rest of the world was a hard sell. Many people thought that we were naive or simply courting publicity, a rock star and an actress. But Sting and I shared a vision and a voice, but it was far from easy to turn our good intentions into real and tangible results. So our first goal was to fulfill the promise Sting and I had made to the Kayapo people that we would help them obtain the legal rights to their ancestral lands so that cattle ranchers, the extractive industries and the government would be compelled to recognize and respect their territory. Well, thanks to the generosity from all over the world and the hard work of so many experts who came on board, in November 1991, the then Brazilian president agreed to create and protect an area of rainforest bigger than Denmark. It was our first success and the start of the journey that has brought us all here today. Now our work has expanded from Brazil to include 23 countries across four continents. Today, we have the privilege and the pleasure of sharing this conference room with 63 true rainforest heroes from 12 rainforest countries. They're all representa re representatives of organizations working in partnership with Rainforest Foundation Norway and they all, every single day, carry out the fight for the rainforest and its peoples. I'd like to ask them all to stand up so that we can give them a well-deserved round of applause and thanks from the bottom of our hearts. Please stand up. Here in Norway, the government has provided close to 500 million US dollars annually since 2008 to support tropical countries in protecting their forests. In fact, it seems that Norway is one of the very few countries with the vision and the imagination to understand how important these natural resources are. Right now, I'd like to take this opportunity also to acknowledge the tireless work of my dear friend and colleague, Lars Lovold, since 1989. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Lars has grown a few gray hairs since we were together in the Amazon in the 80s, but he's still a very handsome man, I find. 
Since 1989, Lars has championed this vital cause and today funds initiatives across 11 countries with a budget this year of $25 million. Rainforest Foundation Norway is indeed a shining example of what can be achieved through focus and persistence when such work is supported at a national level. The rate of deforestation in Brazil over the last two years is a quarter of what it was a decade ago. Well, that's a very encouraging figure. But in truth, there's still a very long way to go. We offer a Band-Aid solution to an enormous challenge. Despite the work that we and other groups have undertaken during the last quarter century, loss of rainforest and violations of indigenous rights continue. Even in Brazil during the last five years, we've seen reversal of government decisions like the huge Belo Monte Dam project that we've all discussed today, where prime rainforest is being opened up and decimated in the name of development and illegal loggers, miners and industrial plantations follow the government's lead. And so our, our foundation is still vitally important. Last year, I don't know if you're aware, a study in the scientific journal Climatic Change showed that just 90 companies, ladies and gentlemen, 90 <coughs> companies worldwide were responsible for two-thirds of industrial greenhouse gases. The top four polluters in the last 150 years were and are Chevron, ExxonMobil, Saudi Aramco and BP. I've witnessed for myself some of that pollution in the oil-soaked earth and the oil-slicked rivers of Ecuador's northern Amazon. The fact is, without game-changing government action across the globe, companies like these will continue to pollute the land, the water, the atmosphere of this precious planet for as long as they're allowed to get away with it. Indigenous groups are the natural protectors of rainforests throughout the world. They need our support to conserve their homelands and to generate income for their communities without harming their culture or their environment. When I went to the Amazon with Lars in the 1980s, like Your Majesty, it was an experience that changed me and lives with me to this day. I saw the indescribable beauty of virgin rainforest, its people living in complete harmony with nature. I saw how they respected animals, the river, the earth, how grateful they were for the life of each and every fish that they caught. They took nothing for granted, unlike us. In our developed world, everything is easy. Most of us don't need to think about how to eat or stay warm, where to find fresh water. And so we've lost a basic understanding of how to live in nature, with nature. We've forgotten how much we really need it to keep alive. When rainforests are destroyed, People's lives are destroyed, health deteriorate, deteriorates, happiness is diminished, livelihoods are lost. Everyone, everything is poorer in every way. We have to work with the earth, not in spite of it, if we're even to hope to survive. Yes, that means industry and governments must change their priorities. But we must also look closer to home. How should we change? We have to regard ancient rainforest peoples and their environment as sacred and precious, as Davi says. We have to repair the damage that we've wreaked upon the earth. We have to be kinder to ourselves and to each other, and to our planet. All of us here today 
are fighting for the most important fight to protect our futures. It is our passion, our energy that will make a difference. It is our commitment that will bring about change. It is our collective vision, my dear friends, which must be shared with the rest of the world. On behalf of Sting, who sends you all so much love today, and myself, thank you so much for the heroic efforts in this challenging and most important work of all. Thank you so much.